company folks. Here's a fifth and possibly last video I wanted to make for today while out at the Marie Selby Botanical Gardens. So here we have a chance to also walk upon the native flora found in the state of Florida. So here's a particular plant that I have noticed a couple of times, but haven't really been able to do a direct video on. We've got ourselves the giant leather fern. These can actually grow about 12 feet in length. So these can grow basically double my height. And they are the largest known fern in Florida, as stated on here. Forgive me, it's actually a little windy outside, but yeah. Yeah, you can find these along hammocks and mangrove swamps, and they do promote stabilization of the soil. And, of course, all ferns are an excellent example of a seedless vascular plant. You may be wondering, what does that mean? Well... Seedless vascular plants describe ferns. So, you may think that they may have seeds, but they don't actually. They actually reproduce by using spores. Same goes for even mushrooms too, fungus. So spores are basically these, that it kind of reminds you of looking at dust. What they do, is they'll basically form like a mat on the ground, whatever is nearby. And thus it'll give birth to ferns. But then they're called a seedless vascular plant because they still have the vascular tissue, as you can see. You know, with the stem and the leaves coming from the fern. But what's fascinating about the giant leather fern, as stated on here, is they produce fiddleheads, which are a type of plant that is actually edible for us. And as a matter of fact, you can find fiddleheads all over the place. It doesn't necessarily have to be associated with it doesn't have to be associated with ferns. I've seen them as far north as the state of Maine and even Alaska. So they do have a wide distribution of where you can find fiddleheads. And here it actually talks about the buttonwood, which is believed to be a cousin of the white mangrove as stated on here. It's oftentimes considered to be another type of mangrove. And yeah, essentially they provide habitats for anolis lizards, which is a wide group of reptiles. Yeah. You can really see that wind coming in from where I'm at. You can really see the waves at the Sarasota Bay. The storm is coming in. Oh, man. Yeah. And here we've got our red mangrove, also known as the walking mangrove. As you can see, all the limbs coming from the red mangrove makes it look like it's walking. That's why it's also known as the walking mangrove. And I've talked about the red mangrove quite a few times. may have to wrap up this video quite shortly because it may only be a matter of time before it actually starts raining <laughs> so I gotta I gotta keep an eye out there's one more particular plant that I want to show you guys and that should be about it give me just a second okay we've got ourselves the Spanish bayonet which actually falls under the genus of yucca which is a type of root. But it's not the same thing as yucca root. Even though it has the same name. But the Spanish bayonet. They call it that 
because when you touch the leaves here, they have these very sharp tips that kind of remind you of a bayonet. For those of you who don't know what a bayonet is, think of the Revolutionary War, right? Where they had those rifles. Well, oftentimes with their rifles, they would have these sharp blades at the end, you know, in case if an enemy came close and they couldn't shoot in time. Well, that's what a bayonet is. And essentially, it has the same shape along their leaves here. But these have been well known for cultivation, especially. And as it says on here too, the Native Americans actually liked using this plant to make particular materials such as brooms and baskets, which makes sense. But not only that, but this plant does face a serious threat, as it mentions on here. It's called the agave snout weevil. And agave is another type of plant that helps with the production of tequila. And it's oftentimes that, as it says on here, you know, since the agave snout weevil enjoys to feed on this plant, sometimes the worms are placed in the bottles of tequila. So in a sense, it kind of does act as an invasive species. But yeah, that is the Spanish bayonet. It's all right, mates. I think the storm is about to roll in, so I really want to wrap up this video. Hope you guys got something of value from the video, learning more about the native flora found in the state of Florida. And as I said, it's well worth your time visiting this place. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and once again, Journey on a Journey is outwards. Take care, folks.